the Maori people, uh, Bryashtra were also Heather Jacobson. Geography and history. The term Maori refers to a group of different tribes that resided in New Zealand. The archaic Maori were the original inhabitants, and their culture dates back to 1000 AD. The traditional branch migrated to the North Island during the 14th century from the Society Islands of Polynesia to avoid war and excessive tribute to other groups of people. Despite the branches, the Maori all share similar cultures. The Maori people settled on both the northern and southern islands of New Zealand. However, more Maori people tend to live on the northern islands. This could have to do with the environment, which is less mountainous than the south. Here we have a map explaining migration uh, along the Polynesian Islands, where we can see that many Maori people migrated from the Cook Islands around 1000 AD. The Maori people were isolated on the New Zealand Islands until Englishman James Cook founded a British settlement in the area, drastically altering their lifestyles. After decades of interaction between the two groups, 500 Maori chiefs met up with the British and signed the Treaty of Waitangi which promised that the Maori would have equal treatment under the law, including in regard to their land and property. Unfortunately, the British did not honor this treaty, and instead seized their property and moved the Maori to reservations, where many people died of disease. After World War II and numerous protests and court rulings, the government acknowledged responsibility to the Maori. In October of 1996, the government of the Maori settled a deal, including land and 17 million, along with traditional fishing rights. Environment. The Maori have lived on both the northern and southern islands in the past and continue to do so to this day. The North Island offers hilly rolling terrain, while the South Island is larger and more mountainous. Since the early days of their culture, the Maori have always had a strong spiritual bound to the land and considered to be sacred. The Environmental Protection Agency of New Zealand has made steps towards improving the environment with perspectives from the Maori people. However, there is still progress to be made. The Maori's connection to the land serves as one of the driving forces behind the Maori cultural movement, meaning that they fight against issues such as deforestation, landfilling, and increased erosion due to the loss of forest cover. Tahatu is a program from the Environmental Protection Agency designed to help the government and the Maori people work together to improve the New Zealand environment. Population. There are approximately 598,000 Maori people today, with 80% of them living in urban areas. Up until the 1920s, they mostly lived in rural areas. Now a majority of the Maori live on the North Island. However, they are known to be mobile. Between 1991 and 1996, the average Maori changed addresses at least once. It is not atypical for Maori to live with their extended families, or with multiple generations living under one roof. Though it is also popular for Maori to live in smaller, more nuclear homes, this indicates a respect to tra tra traditional Maori living arrangements, where the families stuck together. <clears throat> the total fertility rate of the Maori population is 2.8 births per woman, with the median age of Maori mothers being 26 years old. The median age of mothers in the general population of New Zealand is 30 years old. The European settlers initially encouraged intermarriage between the races as a means of civilizing the Maori people. While that is not the driving force behind intermarriage nowadays, it is increasingly common for Maori people to marry outside of their ethnicity. In 2010, 69% of Maori children had multiple ethnicities. Literacy in New Zealand is very common, with almost everyone having sub level literacy. However, 40% of poor King Age New Zealanders were under the minimum score needed to function in a modern economy on a scale of 1 to 5. Maori people tend to score low on the lower end of the scale, leading to pushes for educational reform for Maori children. Culture. The Maori language belongs to the Tahitic branch of the Eastern Polynesian language group. Originally, there were two dialects of the language, North Island and South Island dialects. However, the South Island dialect is now extinct. The Maori speak a mix of English and Maori. However, there is a movement for Maori people to get back to their roots. Schools that offer Maori language curriculum are becoming increasingly popular with those of Maori descent. Nowadays, the Maori are primarily Anglican, Presbyterian, or Catholic. Before contact from foreigners, their religion was based on mana and tapu. Mana is a concept of impersonal force, and tapu is a type of sacredness assigned by status at birth. 
Other Maori traditions are also becoming more prominent, such as tattoos. Moku is facial tattooing that men receive throughout various stages in their life. Ta Nuku is facial tattooing for women along the chin and lips. The Haka is a traditional ancestral war cry used to challenge opponents. The following clip is an example of resurgence of traditional Maori values. Here we have examples of the Moku and Ta Nutu traditional tattoos, as well as a preschool where Maori traditions are taught. Geopolitics. A holiday on February 6th to celebrate the treaty signed between the Maori and the British in 1840 has become controversial in the last few decades. Commemoration began in 1932 when Governor General Lord Bledslow gave the treaty house and grounds to the Maori people. It has since been used to draw attention to issues amongst the New Zealand population, such as when Aparana Nata, a Maori politician, used it as a platform to bring light to race relations in New Zealand. It was designated as a National Day of Thanksgiving in 1960, but was not a national holiday until 1974, when it was renamed New Zealand Day. Protesters felt that this defeated the purpose of the holiday, which was a yearly reminder to the government of their responsibility to the Maori people. At this point, New Zealand was aware of the unrest with the Maori people. In 1971, the activist group Na Tamatau organized a protest at Waitangi. They continued in 1973 when the Na Tamatau returned to mourn the loss of Maori land. The protesters were organized around the idea that the treaty meant nothing so long as the government did not uphold it. In 1984, a hikoi, or march, was staged from Marawahia to Watengi in order to have a meeting with Governor General at the time, David Beattie. 4,000 protesters participated. However, they were not allowed to cross the Waitangi Bridge. After this, the activist Te Kaoriki began the tradition of protesting at the site every year. Because of ongoing protests at the site, Politicians have avoided waiting beyond this day in recent years. Honor the treaty has become a motto of the Waitangi Day protesters. Here, the treaty house, presented in 1932 to the Maori people, marks where the treaty was signed. The 1984 Hikoi March was seen as a high point of the Maori movement. Economy. The Maori generally work in the service sector of New Zealand. However, unemployment is rampant and causes many problems. In some areas, Maori unemployment rates exceed 50%, contributing to issues of urban poverty. Here we have a chart displaying Maori versus general New Zealand population unemployment rates up until the year 2007. While the rates have decreased for both parties, Maori unemployment is still higher than general population unemployment. Conclusion. Though the Maori people have suffered, they remain strong through their culture, focusing on their family and their connection with the world. Their relationship with the New Zealand government will improve as they reclaim their traditions and their land. <laughs>